Today, we're going to be talking about how to prevent internal tasks from falling through the cracks. So we'll start off with a quick agenda so we all know where we're going to be heading today. First of all, I'm going to introduce our speaker. Then we're going to go through what are internal workflows. We'll go through a couple of use case scenarios for these, and then we'll learn about how to plan out how to create these. Finally, we'll finish off by talking, adding automations to these internal workflows. I know that's something that is very exciting to most of the Hubble users that I'm seeing in here. Let's head on to the next slide. Uh, so presenting today's Lunch and Learn is Ron Gordetsky, the co-founder and COO of Hubly, if you don't know that already. Many of you will know him from your training calls, and I know that he has a lot of information that he's super excited to share with you. And then for those of you that do not know me, my name is Olivia, and I am the support lead here at Hubly. I'm going to be keeping an eye on the live chat and the Q&A section in case you all have any questions. So feel free throughout this webinar to start messaging in there and I'll do my best to keep up with the answers. Let's get into it, over to you, Ron. Awesome, thanks so much, Olivia. Welcome in everyone. Um, so I'm excited for today's session. It was actually suggested to us by um, one of our users who attended the last Lunch and Learn that we had um, earlier this year. And the reason why we actually wanted to cover this topic is because we found ourselves spending a lot of time during training, during our webinars, during our workshops even, uh, discussing best practices around creating workflows specifically for managing your client tasks. From planning out your client reviews to your prospect and new client processes to those long-term activations and long-term activities that you do uh, for your clients to stay on top of their needs. But we know that a lot of your work, even though a lot of your work is client related, a lot of it still is not. Um, and so during today's Lunch and Learn, we're gonna be covering um, how you can leverage Hubly to create workflows that not only help you uh, capture those tasks and to-dos that are outstanding for your firm, for yourself, for other team members, but also how to leverage Hubly in a way that lets you plan out those recurring practice management activities that you need to do to stay on top of on a weekly, monthly, and a quarterly basis. So it's going to be workflows basically facing your business and not facing your clients. There are three main use cases that we've identified and we see a lot of um, our customers naturally gravitate towards when it comes to building out these types of workflows. The first use case that is quite common, and you might have already started with this yourself, is leveraging a workflow to really just capture those miscellaneous to-dos, the ones that aren't related to a compliance activity or sales or marketing, uh, or maybe they are. But right now, today, as a starting point, you might just have a running list of things that you need to get done for the business. And having a place to park those to-dos, track them, assign them, add reminders, is a really helpful tool to just, again, having that single place to work, really helping you avoid having to re refer back to um, other uh, notepads, whiteboards, and uh, project management tools. Next, we see that naturally begin evolving to planning that cadence. And what I mean by cadence is it's those tasks that you do on a weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annual basis for your business. This might just be a workflow called operations monthly, operations weekly, operations quarterly or annually. But eventually as your business grows and as your team grows and people specialize in different areas, you might find it useful to create some additional visibility just like you do with your workflows by breaking those uh, apart just like client workflows into topics that you do on a monthly, quarterly and annual basis for your business. Like on my screen here, you see sales and marketing, finance related and accounting tasks and management. And lastly, the last big use case that we see is really building out these workflows that help you shore up those less common processes. Uh, we showed an example for employee onboarding, annual reviews, appreciation, um, but really this could, this could be 
um, anything else specialized to your business, like an ABV update. Um, if you work with an external consultant for that, for example, uh, it could be your pro process of buying technology or your uh, annual uh, business insurance review. So things that you look for when you get that uh, commercial liability insurance renewed on your business. So you can really set up these specialized standard operating procedures for these individual less common activities that you do. And this way, A, it's gonna make it more consistent. So the next time that you bring on an employee, you can actually iterate on how it went with the last employee that you ran through this, this process. The other benefit is that as your team grows, it makes it naturally um, more instinctive to actually delegate some of these things away. Obviously, you're not gonna tell an employee to onboard themselves, but you might specify some tasks in there, some projects, um, some uh, information that you want them to review or training you want them to do. And you can assign that to them right in that system that they're already gonna use to run the rest of the business and manage client-facing tasks. So the more that you can do in one place, the easier it's gonna to be to see everything going on, again, as a summary, but also to get new hires trained up and to improve upon these uh, things long-term. Awesome. So for this next part, I'm gonna cover um, how you can get started. We're gonna jump right into it and show you basically how to set up your first internal workflows. And if you're already a Hubly user, um, you know the drill, you can follow along in a browser tab. Um, and so that way you don't have to go and rewatch this webinar. Uh, in order to go and um, begin doing what we're going to demonstrate. So if you're a Hubly user, you can go to app.myhubly.com and a new browser tab, and I'm going to switch over myself as well. Awesome. So for those of you joining me in your hub, we're going to actually get started by creating a workflow. This is going to be your very first operations workflow. And it's gonna be designed to help you park those outstanding tasks that you have for the business, for yourself, really to use this as your starting point today. So in, a, in this new workflow that I hit create on, we're gonna actually call this um, to-dos. Again, you can call it miscellaneous to-dos. You can give it any name you want. It's, not gonna be that main workflow that you build out to be specialized on a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis. It's gonna be the place that you can park your uh, outstanding tasks today so that you can have, again, a place to, to monitor them, um, set reminders, and track completion in Hubble. The one caveat when planning workflows that are not gonna be client-facing is I've seen a lot of firms get a, a little bit confused when they don't actually add ops or operations or admin or some other indicator thereof into that workflow's name. It just makes it really easy to, to differentiate that this workflow is an operational or an internal workflow and all of the other ones that you have are gonna be still primarily client-facing. In this case, we're not gonna go ahead and plan out our default tasks and we're just gonna hit done. Next. We're gonna go ahead and create um, or find a client that's named after your business. So in my case, I have a contact record called Demo Advisory Firm. It goes hand in hand with my contact record called Demo Advisor. But for yourselves, it, uh, it would likely be a contact record named after your business. Now, the reason why I want to really encourage you to use your business as that contact is because you also might have a contact that you add for yourself to track your own to-dos as well. Maybe that's remembering to set up an out-of-office reply uh, in time for Easter Monday. Or maybe that's a reminder to update your own billing information uh, on your phone plan because the credit card expired. So you just wanna have that kind of level of differentiation. So that's why I really recommend creating or adding, if you already have one, a contact that's named after your business. So this is gonna be just for those business tasks. I've actually already done this. I've created a couple of workflows um, and I can show you um, that I've also saved them down into this view that I call practice management. This is where I can keep track of all of my 
miscellaneous outstanding tasks, as well as those ongoing uh, cadence um, that I created there as well. And I'm going to walk you through. So you can see this very first workflow has that demo advisory firm, the firm client at the very top. It also has a client that's demo advisor. So that would be named after you personally. On the demo advisory firm, once you've added the client in, you can begin documenting those tasks that are just gnawing away at you. The things that you feel like you're gonna forget and maybe they're scribbled down on a piece of paper or in a notepad or just in the back of your mind. So my examples here are to update the payment method, roll over to the new uh, voice uh, phone line provider, and probably also to remember to pay that registration fee for the conferences uh, that come due in April. As you can see for each of these tasks, I've actually went ahead and set up a reminder. And this way, all the important tasks that are time sensitive, they have these reminders at the very top of your client card. You're probably familiar with this because you've been using this exact same method for tracking real client tasks. So this makes it really easy to see what you need to get done, what's overdue, um, and what's coming up on April 1st next quarter. The one last note is that if you do work on a team uh, where you have multiple users in Hubly, then it's usually a good idea to go ahead and either assign the individual tasks to whoever's going to be responsible for them or to go ahead and assign the entire workflow. Because if you don't, then these operational tasks will continue to show up in the hub feed for all users in your hub. And we just don't want that. Next, you can go ahead and find or create a client or contact record named after you personally. So in our case, I already did that um, as demo advisor. And you can add them into, or yourself, I guess, into this workflow as well. And you can use this as a, again, a, a task list for business related tasks that you need to do for yourself. Getting in this practice, especially as you begin working on a larger team, uh, you can begin to demonstrate and encourage others on your team to leverage this workflow as, an, as a means by which to keep track of those items that are outstanding for themselves. And eventually when this list gets too, too long, um, you can either hide completed tasks. So once you actually start completing work here, if your to-do list gets very long, you can actually go ahead and hide the completed tasks for this workflow, which will just make it a little bit shorter and just show you the outstanding work. Or of course, you can complete the entire workflow and add yourself back in as a fresh copy. That way, maybe on a quarterly basis, you just refresh so you have your Q1 to-dos, Q2 to-dos, Q3 to-dos. You just don't want to keep a client in here um, forever because then that list is going to get very, very long. And it's going to be harder for you when you look back two years from now to find those to-dos that you did in Q1 of 2022 uh, because then you're going to be reviewing a long list of 30 plus items. We often get that kind of question from, from advisors later on saying, hey, Ron, my list is getting pretty long. I have over 60 tasks here. Most of them are completed. Um, when is it time to kind of mark this chapter completed and add it back in? So I typically recommend on a quarterly basis is a pretty good cadence. If not that, then at least on an annual basis. So inevitably, you're going to begin finding tasks that you start recording in here, have multiple steps, and are really things that you want to do on a recurrent basis. Maybe they are sales and marketing related functions that you do on a, uh, you update on a monthly basis or you plan on a quarterly basis or you review on an annual basis. Or maybe they are billing or financial related activities that you just find yourself constantly adding back in manually. Whenever you see yourself doing that in Hubly, it's typically a good idea and a good hint to go and use that to build out a workflow around that activity. And that's exactly what we're doing next. So next, we're going to think about those ongoing, that ongoing cadence of activities that we're trying to stay on top of for our business on a weekly, on a monthly, on a quarterly, and on an annual basis. From sales and marketing related tasks to finance related tasks to management, we can basically plan these out in Hubly to really capture the elements that we want to do on a monthly, on a quarterly, and on an annual basis for those three areas of our business. For you, 
you might find it easy today to just start off by creating three workflows. Just by going and saying that you have a monthly internal tasks, quarterly internal tasks, and annual internal tasks, and just begin documenting those things, whether they're related to sales and marketing or finance or the management of your business or compliance. And then as your business grows, you might then break these apart into their own sales and marketing, finance, management and compliance workflows, just like we did. We actually went ahead and built out the various workflows for uh, each of these areas on a monthly, quarterly, and annual basis. And I'll just demonstrate some things that you might want to take care of on a sales and marketing front on a monthly basis. So reviewing client communications and any of those automated campaigns, making sure that you've published or planned that one piece of content, reviewing which business development activity um, you did this month. If you didn't, then noting that down as well. Planning, again, business development events. Um, and if you didn't, again, this creates a place and a record to note that down. And then planning your social media activations. Obviously, our tasks here are pretty generic. In your case, you might find it useful to also add additional information and capture that as a description, as details on that task. So you can go in here and you can begin actually um, describing exactly how many posts you, you aim to achieve per month. You can uh, start saving different templates. Um, and you can also bookmark different resources right into that task as well. So for Hubble users, you're probably very familiar with this already. Um, if, you're, if you're not familiar or if you're not a Hubble user, um, then reach out to us um, after the call and we can always show you a demonstration of how to do this as well. So how to really build out those well-defined tasks that have a full description and bookmarking those resources as links into that task as well. This also lets you iterate, obviously. And as, as the activities that you do in a sales and marketing front expand on a monthly basis, you can begin, you can come, come in here and, and actually add in to that list. As your technology changes, if client communications started out just by sending a simple email through Gmail or Outlook, but eventually you adopted MailChimp, then you can always come back in here and you can edit this to basically your MailChimp campaign. You can also go in and, and again, link some resources or link MailChimp as a bookmark. So you can always find that uh, really quickly, no matter what computer you're working on. And the same goes for your finance tasks and management tasks on a monthly uh, basis. Things like payroll, reviewing financial statements, reconciling uh, monthly the, the receivables, et cetera. And again, this makes it really easy to create these descriptions on tasks to capture additional information that you might otherwise be missing. These are gonna look different for your business than obviously they do in our training hub, but using the starting point of thinking about things that you do on a monthly, quarterly, and annual basis, and then eventually breaking them down into these themed workflows around sales and marketing, finance, and management is a really good place to start. I recommend really not going over these three categories uh, for any of these uh, kind of uh, frequencies, because as you can imagine, having five workflows on a monthly basis, five works on a quarterly basis, and five on an annual basis is going to get pretty audacious to manage. You don't really want to do that in here. So I'd say splitting up to two or three maximum so that you can at least still see at a glance where things are bad. Because remember, as you get going, you're going to be adding your demo advisory firm to these workflows, just like we did here for sales and marketing. And you're going to be working through here to mark the things that you've completed this month. So every month, this is going to create some work for you to actually do. Unfortunately, Hubbly can't do this stuff for you. So even though we help you plan and structure it, you're still going to be on the hook to actually dedicate the time or block out the time in your calendar every month to go in and do the activities that you've spent all this time planning. So as a starting point and as a rule of thumb for anything that we, that we do here at Hubbly and we recommend you to do, 
we do not recommend you to start out by planning out these really complicated workflows that are aspirational. Start by planning workflows that actually support what you already do, and then add to them as what you do expands. Awesome. So last but not least, we're going to add automations. So what I mean by automations is that once you've taken the time to actually build out these workflows that pull client that, that basically you want to do for yourself on a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis, you want to automate your client card for your business to be pulled into the, these workflows or triggered automatically on a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis. Makes sense, right? So to do that, we're actually going to go back into that client card that you created, into that demo advisory firm card in my place. Or in my case, sorry. At the very bottom here, you're going to see that I've already created a tag called Ops Operations. But first and foremost, you're going to go in here and you're going to actually create this tag and add it to that client card just for your business client. So if you name a client after your business, you're going to go into that client card, hit tags, and then type in Ops. And in my case, it already exists. But in your case, you're going to see an option to create a new tag. Just hit create, it's going to think for a second, and it's going to appear at the very bottom of your client card. This is going to allow us to look for this tag group and add the client card for your firm into each of these workflows using workflow rules. I'm going to show you what I mean here. Next, we're going to pick any of your workflows. So if you created a stub for your monthly, to do's, or if you actually started planning out your monthly finances or monthly sales and marketing tasks, just double click on that workflow again. And you can go down to automation rules. So you can select add a rule, and that's gonna be the default, the top rule here, which is the repeating rule. So it's the first rule in the list. You're gonna hit configure. And in this interface, you're gonna go ahead and find that tag that you just created. In our demo hub, we do have a stream named Ops as well. We're going to ignore that one because in this case, we're going to be focusing on using that tag. So now, Helvi is going to add clients with Ops as a tag. And in this case, this is a monthly cadence. So we're going to say every one month. And that's going to start on the 1st of April in this case. So this way, Helvi is going to look for any clients that have Ops. It's always going to be just one client, your business. And then on the first of every month, Hubby's gonna check. If that client is not in the workflow already, Hubby's gonna add that client back in. And so that's the important note is that why I recommend keeping these workflows manageable is because Hubby's not gonna add the same client in over and over again if you start falling behind. Meaning that if on April 1st, you still haven't worked through this first workflow and you haven't marked it completed, then when Hubly checks your monthly cadence, it's not going to restart this workflow again for you. So you need to make sure that you plan these things out that, you, that you're going to stay on top of. So that's why we, again, recommend really time blocking in your calendar some time every month to do your business tasks. And that's also going to help you create that headspace that clients can book over as well. Personally, at Hubly, we actually do that on Mondays and Fridays, and those are internal days where we would catch up on our own internal tasks to run the business. So basically, for monthly workflows every month, you're going to want to go through, check off the things that you completed, keep the things that you didn't do unchecked. If you wanted to leave a note, you can always use comments to document your thoughts. So maybe you want to explain or just memorialize to yourself why you didn't make any social media posts this month. And then when you're done, you don't have to complete all the tasks because you didn't do those three things, for example. You can just mark that workflow completed, really capturing what you did do and by the end of the month, what you didn't. But marking the workflow completed is gonna move that workflow into that service record for this client, same as, same as you do with your, the rest of your clients. So you get to see your monthly cadence for sales and marketing in March of this year. And then the following month, this rule, is going to add the client back into this workflow. 
And the same is true for your quarterly or your annual. You're just going to want to go in and adjust that frequency instead of being monthly, being every three months or being every one year in this case. Awesome. So that's really it. There's not much more to this than that. Um, I recommend really starting small, thinking about the things that you want to do on a weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annual basis. Don't worry about breaking things out by sales and marketing, finance, or management themes. And then as your needs grow here, as your business grows, as you bring on people on your team and you begin delegating specific tasks away, that'd be a good time to create some visibility by breaking them up into the sales and marketing, finance, and management themes, and then going even deeper and assigning individual tasks to whichever team member is going to be responsible for doing them every month, quarter, or year. Awesome. As always, if you need any help at any time, uh, we're always standing by for our Hubble users in our chat. So when you're working in Hubble, just send us a message. Yes, we can share these workflow templates with you. So if you, if you want to see them in your hub, just send us a message in the chat and Blair or Olivia can help you out with that. They can also answer questions if you, if you have any questions uh, about anything once you get into Hubble and begin setting things up. If you're not a Hubble user yet, well, we recommend scheduling a free strategy call. That way you can actually talk through any questions that you have with our sales team. They can help you understand how you can use internal workflows and most importantly, how you can use client-facing workflows to plan out those client activities that you already do on the day-to-day -to, -day to run your business and, and service your clients. I saw a couple of questions come in in the Q&A as well as in the chat. I do recognize that we're two minutes before that half hour. So for anyone that does have to jump off, thank you again for joining us for Lunch and Learn today. Uh, for any of you that want to hear the answers, stick around and uh, we'll, we'll probably go until um, 40 past uh, the hour, so another 10 minutes here. Cool, so I can hop in with a couple of questions right here. Um, I've got a question in the Q&A box um, from Elliot. He says, as you complete recurring tasks, how do you have the next iteration created? Do you do it manually and calculate the date for the next one? Um, so maybe you're on, if you can expand a little bit on kind of creating those rules how you'd recommend, um, yeah, yeah, setting up the next, the, ne the next time through. Great question. So, a good example could be actually found in the finance workflow, right? So we talked about already the, the workflow rules. So the first way to create iterations, because this finance workflow doesn't yet have an automation rule, would be by using that repeating rule. So you basically make sure that you set up a repeating rule that deposits those clients that have the ops tag into the workflow on a recurring basis, on an iterating basis once a month. That's the first way. So now, as I already mentioned, on the first of the next month, Hub is gonna go ahead and run this search, finding the ops tag and adding any clients that have that ops tag into this workflow. That's what Hub is gonna do behind the scenes for you. So on the first of the month, you're gonna get a fresh copy of this workflow started for your firm. Next though, you might find that some of these tasks you want to come back to at a specific time during the month. For example, you can't check if payroll ran for your team on the first of the month. You probably want to reserve that for the last week of the month. So obviously the first few times around, you're probably going to be going in here, setting a reminder, saying, okay, remind me to make sure that I did this by the 31st. And you're probably going to also be assigning this task to yourself if you haven't already assigned the entire workflow to yourself. The next time around, you can improve upon how you plan this workflow. So you can go up and you can edit this workflow and you can set up an automatic reminder to trigger. So for example, this payroll task can have a reminder that triggers when the client starts the workflow and it could trigger after, in this case, Maybe it's going to be day or week or month. And you can basically do it this way. So in our case, we're going to say it's going to trigger after four weeks. So four weeks in, you're going to have that reminder overdue. What that means is that leading up to that reminder coming due, this reminder is going to be in the hub feed 
And the last thing you want to do is assign it to yourself, obviously, so that you can see that that's a task that needs your attention when you look at it. And so that's what it's going to look like is you're going to open up your hub feed and you're going to see that there's a task called payroll for your advisory firm that comes due and you can see who it's assigned to on your team as well. And this way, every time that the workflow gets started by Hubly, that reminder gets set up again and again and again um, automatically, and you don't have to do anything about it. It basically helps you stay on top of those tasks. I hope that answers your question. Awesome. Livia, any other questions that um, you'd like me to get to? Um, yeah, there's one more that um, I don't know if you feel like you want to answer it, but we've got a roadmap question. I know you you love talking about a roadmap. Um, any chance that more sophisticated recurring options are on the roadmap? For example, the first Friday of every month. Um, yeah. Got it. So basically, great question. So basically, can we can we adjust this to actually pick days? So we can pick days. Um, you can pick the days for the repeating rule. For the recurring rule um, just by going down to the weeks field unfortunately on the months it actually doesn't uh, doesn't give you that option but when you go down to weeks you can select every four weeks and then you can actually tell hubly which day you would like this rule to run so if you want to be on a friday every four weeks uh you can give it a starting date and it'll just run after that as well so that is there but if there are any other uh specific recommendations that you have um, we really do recommend writing them up in the feature request uh, tool that we have, because that way we can actually better understand exactly what you're referring to there. Uh, if you can give a screenshot or other explanation, and then that way also other users that have a similar need can upvote that and bring it to the attention of not just myself and Olivia, but also our entire engineering team. So they really monitor our feature request backlog quite closely. Last but not least, this is a really great suggestion that we that we received right from um, our previous lunch and learn attendees. So we wanted to um, try our luck again um, and ask if there are any other topics that you would like us to cover in the shorter 30 minutes uh, lunch hour format, please do send us a recommendation. You can either uh, send it in the chat publicly or you can target hosts and panelists if you don't want everybody else to see it as well. But we'd love to hear from you. And uh, we're also going to be sending a survey probably later on asking all of our users for different topics they want to hear. But for, uh, for all of you who did take the time today, uh, we really wanted to see um, if there are any topics that you'd want us to cover in the coming months again. Awesome. And we're going to wrap it up there. Um, thank you again for joining us today.